Sunday I've ever witnessed. It was, it was, it was wonderful. Oh my God, the, 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 the children, the youth, especially the one that impersonated me. <laughs> oh my God, that was, that was, they did good job. The main choir, oh my God, I didn't know, even shine. They all came and they were shining. It, it, in fact, I, I enjoyed it. And those of you online that are not here, uh, you, are, you are members of this church, and I thank you all also on behalf of Pastor Steve and Donna and every pastor. Our deacons are awesome. Deacon Jones, you are hilarious. Drug pusher. <laughs> You're a drug dealer, you said. <laughs> and your wife said, don't say that. They will think you sell drugs. Say, that's what I do. <laughs> Thank you so much. You guys are awesome. 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 I, I won't mention all the deacons because I may miss one person because the deacons are all keep switching. I don't know who is deacon and who is not right now. So if I begin to say it, I'll say I'm at 24 names that are deacons. So. But tonight, um, Pastor Steve asked me to speak. And when he asked me to speak, I then turned it to the Holy Spirit to speak. Because whatever I say here... Uh, not my words, uh, because uh, my wife can tell you, anytime I'm asked to speak, that I'm going to be speaking, I wake up in the middle of the night, there's something that is talking to me, honestly, talking to me, and I wake up in the middle of the night, and I, and I scribble, 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 and I go back to sleep, and the next morning, something, I'm taking a bath, and something, I stopped, I stopped the bath, and I came out, and I, I'm, <laughs> and you can ask my wife in, 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 in private, and she will tell you. We are driving on the street, and then something comes, I pull over. We, uh, what, what are you doing? We're not out of gas. I said, that's okay. And I, I wouldn't talk to them anyway. My kids, I just <laughs> finished what I'm writing. I said, so I'm sorry about that. Let's go. <laughs> you know? And that's how everything I say come, comes around. And, and I, I appreciate God for that. But tonight, you know, Pastor Steve, uh, so for several weeks, um, has, and here she is. Mommy, tell them that every time I'm driving, I'll stop and begin to write. I wake up in the middle of the night, I start to write. <laughs> I just talked about you. <laughs> Pastor Steve, for several weeks, um, um, has been talking to us about speaking, uh, to us about catching the fire. But, but, but tonight, uh, we all know that the fire is the Holy Ghost. Uh, uh, it's the Spirit of God. That's the fire. And fire represents God. So tonight I want to speak on encounter the fire. Father, I'll speak to us again as you only can, O oh Lord my God. Uh, as, we, as we work, as we, as we open ourselves up to encounter the fire, O oh God. Father, help us, O oh Lord God. Because you are the only person that can make us to encounter you. Father, help us to do that in Jesus' name. You know, Moses encountered the fire in the burning bush. You know, in Exodus 3, 2. And then years, we know the story, years before Moses encountered the fire, he was a prince of Egypt, right? He was an heir apparent to the throne. Series of events took place and Moses had to flee for his dear life. While as a fugitive in the wilderness, he put away his past failures. He put away the mistakes he made in the past. He put away his guilt. His thought of once being a prince of Egypt, he, he, lay it, he laid it down. He laid pride aside. And do you know what Moses did? He didn't go saying when Jethro asked him to take care of the sheep in the wilderness. He didn't tell Jethro, do you know who I am? I am the prince of Egypt. I am the heir apparent of Egypt. No, he humbled himself to a point of being a shepherd. Caring for someone else's sheep. Now, it was in this state of humility and so searching that he encountered the fire. And whenever the fire of God descends, things change. 
when Moses encountered the fire, the fire melted him and remolded him into a vessel of honor to be used by God to accomplish his purpose to set the captive free. When you encounter the fire, the fire will melt you. The fire will remake you. The fire will purify you so that you can accomplish your purpose. Moses was not an eloquent speaker when he encountered the fire or before he encountered the fire. The fire gave him utterance. The utterance he needed to face Pharaoh, the king of Egypt. The fire took away his fear and replaced it with boldness and sound mind. My prayer tonight is that we encounter the fire of God so that we, he can remake us, remold us to accomplish our purpose in the name of Jesus. Our lives will become better when we encounter the fire. The fire will burn in our homes and not to burn it down. <laughs> In our homes, the fire will burn in our homes, in our hearts, in our marriages, in our children's lives, in our relationships. And it, it will purify us and transform us into whom God has created us to be in the first place. Moses was born to be the one that will set or deliver the people of Israel from captivity in Egypt. But things happen. His purpose in life was to do that. He was born for that. But things happen, life happened, that mitigated against the original purpose of God for his life. Many years passed, and it seemed as though the purpose of God for Moses was never going to happen. Moses was getting older and older by the day. But God's plan for his life never changed. It doesn't matter how old we are. Or how straight we have been. There's a song that says, I've, I've wandered far away from God, but now I'm coming home. Anytime you wander and come home, it's not late. Moses was 80 years old when he encountered the fire. And the purpose of God came to pass in his life at that age. As a matter of fact, Moses encountered the fire when he, was, when he thought he has lost everything. Nothing can stop God's plan for your life. Nothing. It doesn't matter how old you are. It doesn't matter how young you are. It doesn't matter what your weaknesses are. God will always accomplish his purpose for your life. And we know that the plan of God for our life is the plan of good and not of evil. But you must first encounter the fire. Moses was still wandering in the wilderness until he encountered the fire. And the original purpose came to pass. It came out in public display. And the whole world noticed. The fire will teach us all things. How to walk the walk and talk the talk. The Bible says in John 14, 26, But the advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you all things and will remind you of everything I have said to you. Now, after Jesus was crucified and he rose from the dead and ascended into heaven, the disciples were in the upper room, waiting as Jesus had instructed them. And when the time came, all of a sudden, a sound came and fire descended from above. The disciples were no longer the same after the encounter with the fire. They began to do exploits. Their zeal increased. God's original plan for Peter, for Peter, for Peter, was to make him a fisher of men. You remember when Jesus first met Peter, he told him that from henceforth, you will no longer be catching fish, but men. Now, when Jesus died, Peter went back to his old occupation, catching fish. But when he encountered the fire on the day of the Pentecost, the original purpose that God has created him for manifested. Peter spoke boldly 
without fear or intimidation. And 5,000 people were converted. He became fisher of men, the original purpose. When you encounter the fire, people will notice. They will begin to notice that something new is happening in the atmosphere because they can see the flame. They can feel the heat. They can see the smoke coming out of you. People will notice that you are beginning to cook because they can smell it. If you want to enjoy all the things that God has prepared you for you, created you for, first encounter the fire. If you want your career to kick off, you must encounter the fire. If you want your business to bloom, you must first encounter the fire. If you want to be promoted on your job, then you must encounter the fire. If you want your marriage to come back to life, restored, then you must encounter the fire. If you want to have a godly spouse, then you must encounter the fire. If you want to excel in your academics, then you must encounter the fire. Now, if you want to live a good and peaceful life, then you must encounter the fire. But if you cannot encounter the fire, if you cannot catch the fire, then your wood is wet. Your shackle is wet. So you must first dry them and prep them so that they can catch the flame and burn. Your dreams, your aspirations, your goals will not be attained if you don't catch the fire, if you don't encounter the fire. There is the potential energy in all of us. And there is the kinetic energy. The potential energy is the stored energy, the energy inside that has not been used. It is the energy reserved, unleashed. Kinetic energy is the energy in motion. Potential is just what it is, potential. Have you had someone tell you that you have the potential to be a great singer, a, a great teacher, a great lawyer, or a great speaker, public speaker, and so on? Unless you do something about it, that potential stays dormant. Peter didn't know he had the potential to be an eloquent speaker until he encountered the fire. He didn't know he had a gift of public speaking. Moses himself didn't even know how fearless he could be against Pharaoh until he encountered the fire. He didn't know how the power and the boldness he possessed inside until he encountered the fire. When you encounter the fire, the fire rekindles that which is in you. Because God has given each and every one of us the ability to do exploit. And we are not doing it because we have not encountered the fire. When you encounter the fire, it will rekindle whatever God has deposited in you in the first place. This was the same Moses that ran away from Pharaoh in fear. The same Moses. This was the same Peter that denied Jesus before a little girl. The disciples didn't even know they could heal the sick until they encountered the fire. Recall that there was a man when Jesus was on the mountain. There was a man that brought his sick child to the disciples, but they were not able to heal, heal him. The healing power came upon them when they encountered the fire. When you encounter the fire, it will radically change you. It will change how you think. It will change how you feel. And it will change how you live. It will enable you to walk in confidence, in boldness. And it will break you free from everything, or the life controlling bondage. It will make you break the habits that control your life. It will help you break the, emo the, 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 the emotional state you have been in and the generational tendencies. It will lead you to create things, to disrupt things, and to start things. When Paul and Silas 
were in jail. The doors opened. I know you know the story. The doors opened, and the chains on their hands and feet loosened. And the jailer said to them, what can I do to encounter this fire? I'm paraphrasing. You know exactly what the jailer said. He said, what can I do to be saved? But I paraphrased. I said, what can I do to encounter this fire? So the question tonight is, what can you do? What can we do to encounter the fire? Well, I'm glad you asked, Brother Sonny. I'm going to tell you. <laughs> well, fire is an acronym. I'm glad you asked. If you want to encounter the fire, you must, first of all, free yourself of the wetness. Free yourself of the dampness of your wood. You must dry the damp, wet wood in your life. When I was a little boy, we were taught to throw away or throw out old food, old trash on the eve of the new year so that we can be free of old baggage in order to start the new year afresh. Because greater and better things await for us in the new year. We must take off the dust from the shoes of the past. From the shoes of the present, the dust of the past, from the shoes of the present, so they don't mess up the past of the future. Don't carry the dust from the shoes of the past and want to go into the present. It will soil it. If you want to encounter the fire for the new season of your life, you must first of all remove the wet old shackle from your grill. You must first get rid of the trash in your life. You must break away from whatever controls your mind because the Bible says whatever controls your mind controls you. When your mind is filled with trash, you can't catch the fire. If your heart is wet with debris, clean it. Dry it out. If your heart is filled with unforgiveness, clean it up. If your mind is soaked with bitterness, rancor, dry it up. The Bible says in Ephesians 4.31, you must get rid of all bitterness, all rage, all anger and slander, along with every form of malice. You can't have that in your heart and expect to catch the fire. Moses cleaned himself up, humbled himself. If my people who are called by my name shall humble themselves and, 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 and trust God and, 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 and seek God with all your heart, they will find him. If you, if, you, if you clean up your heart, if you forgive your enemies, how can you expect to catch the fire when you are bothered by heavy load? The fire cannot ignite because it's too wet. You cannot encounter the fire if your heart is not right. If your heart is filled with jealousy, hatred, envy, gossip, backbiting, backstabbing. Follow the command of God to love one another if you want to catch the fire. I know it's not Mother's Day, but you can call your mother today and say, Mother, let's make peace. I know it's not Father's Day. You can call your father and say, Dad, I love you. Honor them so you can be free to encounter the fire. It's, that's the only command in the Bible that comes with the promise. That it might be well with you. Free yourself so you can encounter the fire and it shall be well with you. If it is guilt, forgive yourself first. So you can encounter the fire. If your attitude is not right, adjust it so you can encounter the fire. David said, create in me a new heart, O oh God. And renew the right spirit within me. That must be the state of your heart if you want to encounter the fire. Don't let the devil rob you of God's purpose for your life. Don't let the, the devil rob you of the promises of God for your life. If the Son shall therefore set you free, 
you are free indeed. So why are you still in bondage? Or allow yourself to be in bondage. So why are you still being controlled by habit when Jesus has set you free? But do you know that God has delivered us from the power of darkness and has translated us into the kingdom of his light? As he says in Colossians 1.13, free yourself from bad habits that smother you, that dampen you. Free yourself from past mistakes and guilt. Ezekiel 18.31 says, cast away from you all the transgressions you have committed and get a new heart. 2 Corinthians 5.17 says, therefore, if any man be in Christ Jesus, he's a new creature. All things are passed away. And behold, all things have become new. That's the state that you will be in to encounter the fire. It was Deepak Chopra who said, in the process of letting go, you will lose many things from your past, but you will find yourself. Someone said that some people think that it, that, that think that it's, they, what they are holding on makes them strong. They don't understand that it is what they are letting go that makes them strong. Do you know that when you put on Christ, as he says in Galatians 3.27, you become a new creature with God. You are buried with Christ in baptism. Therefore, walk in the freeness of life. If someone reminds you about your past mistakes and failures, when they remind you that, that they are, that's the devil trying to get you so wet that you cannot catch the fire. So if someone comes and reminds you about your past mistakes and failures, tell them about the amazing grace that saved a wretch like you. If someone comes to chain you to your past, say to them, my chains are gone. I have been set free. My Lord, my Savior has ransomed me. And like a flood, his mercy reigns, unending love, amazing grace. And if someone comes to you as a messenger of Satan to torment you, remind them about what the Lord said in 2 Corinthians 12, 9. My grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in your weakness. After he resurrected from the dead, Jesus went back to Peter. Peter's wood, Peter's wood was so wet. And Jesus knew that Peter had to first dry that wood before he could encounter the fire. Peter had denied Jesus. He was still carrying the guilt. So Jesus knew that it was important for Peter to divest himself of guilt and set his heart right to dry up his damp wood. Jesus asked him, Simon, son of James, do you love me more than these? And Peter said, Lord, you know I love you. Then Jesus said, take care of my sheep. Do you know that Peter's wood was so dry that when he encountered the fire on the day of the Pentecost, something remarkable happened. He took back his destiny from the enemy. His original destiny, his original purpose was to be fisher of men. But the devil wanted to rob Peter of that destiny. And when Jesus died, Peter said, I'm going back to fishing. That was the enemy. I'm going back to Egypt. But Jesus said, no, Peter, you mine. Peter took back his destiny. And the whole world noticed. Once you encounter the fire, something will happen. The whole world will notice. So why do you still tie yourself down with guilt and grief? Christ has redeemed us from our past. So why do you go back to it, Peter? There is therefore now no more condemnation for they that are in Christ Jesus. Because Christ has set you free. Break away from those habits. Break away. You must come out of anger, bitterness, hatred, vindictiveness, resentment. Rancor, so you can catch and encounter the fire. 
So if you want to encounter the fire, free yourself of dampness in your heart. Hatred, bitterness, unforgiveness, rancor. You see your fellow man, you, you just want to die because you saw him or her. How are you going to catch the fire? How are you going to encounter the fire? Somebody is coming to church from over here and you're coming from here. You don't want both of you to meet. You go that way. You prefer to take a mile instead of going 10, 10 minutes. And you want to encounter the fire? No, now. Or think it possible? It's not possible. When I was growing up, they would say when something that is impossible, they say it's impossicant. I don't know what I mean, but <laughs> if you want to catch the fire, my brother, myself too, I got to let go. So if you want to catch the f encounter the fire, first of all, free yourself. Then I am spelling fire. Ignore negativity. In Philippians 4.8, Apostle Paul said, Brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue, and if there be any praise, think on these things. That's what you should be thinking about. Good things so that you can catch the fire. No negative thoughts. You cannot encounter the fire if you respond to every negative criticism. If people are criticizing you, ignore them. Even when you are offended, forgive and get back on the road again. I don't want to sing Willie Nelson's song, On the Road Again. <laughs> can't, just can't wait to get on the road again. If you offend me, I will ignore you because I want to get on the road. I, I want to encounter the fire. I don't want to stay back here. You pulled me over unnecessarily. I don't want to stay pulled over. You don't have to revenge. You don't have to respond to every false accusation. People have a tendency of accusing people unnecessarily. If you dwell on that, your heart will dwell on it, and you can encounter the fire. Because your heart is already bothered by something. But if you let go, it's free, open. Winston Churchill said, you will never reach your destination if you stop and throw stones at every dog that barks. In other words, you will never encounter the fire if you preoccupy yourself with junk. The chicken said, I can't fly because I, my body is too heavy for my wings. Well, chicken, eat less. <laughs> so you cannot encounter the fire if you fill your mind with negative thoughts. Always think positive. The Bible says, as a man thinks, so is he. Clothe yourself with compassion, kindness, forgiveness, humility, gentleness, and patience. I clothed myself with patience, so I married one. <laughs> if you want to encounter the fire, you must, first of all, free yourself of junk, of debris, of wet wood, of those things. You know what I'm talking about. I don't know. Everybody has one. Free yourself of those things. Number two, ignore negativity. Ignore negative thoughts, negative feelings, anything negative in your life. Ignore them. Then uh, reevaluate yourself if you want to encounter the fire. Look inside yourself. Look inside your grill. Open your grill and look. There are some areas that are wet still. Sometimes one section is heating up. The other section is not heating up. Do something about it so they all can heat up. Maybe the charcoal on one side is too wet to catch the fire. Pour some charcoal starter and rekindle the fire. If there are any dead charcoal in your life, rekindle it. Jesus said to Lazarus, come forth. Today, in the name of Jesus, I call forth every dead Lazarus in your life. 
Any dry bone in your life that does not allow you to accomplish purpose, does, does not allow you to encounter the fire, I ask them to die in the name of Jesus. I ask the dry bones to come to life in the name of Jesus. One day, I tried to log into my computer, and I noticed that my computer was not coming on. I hit it, and I hit it. It wasn't coming on. I did everything I could, but it wouldn't budge. It was a brand new computer. Then I called the guy that sold the computer to me, and I said, Nitek, I accused him of giving me a bad computer. The guy said, it was a brand new computer. I'm going to come over and, and look at it. Then he came over, and after checking through, he discovered that the wall plug was dead. So it wasn't the computer. It was the wall plug that was dead. So the computer was fine. Just that electricity was not transmitting from the wall to the computer. So it, it, did, it wasn't flowing anymore. So I had to change the wall plug and then plug it back and it, caught the, it encountered the fire. So it wasn't the computer that was bad. It was the connection. Sometimes we are too weak to start our day, and the energy is not flowing anymore. We call God and complain. Every day we complain like chicken. But the real problem is not God. The real problem is not even not our bodies, per se. The real problem is our connectivity to the source. The fire. Because we're not connected. And so we are weak. We are, we are, we, we, don't, we lose it. We're not functioning up to par. We can't even turn on like the computer. Because we are, it's plugged, it's not working. We have to connect to the source. So we must reevaluate, reevaluate ourselves and see if we are still connected. Jesus said, abide in me and I in you so that you will bear good fruit, so that you will be energized, <laughs> so you'll be alive, so, so you can walk in newness of life. As the fish must connect with the water to live, and as the tree must connect to the earth to live, we must connect to God to live. Until you can rekindle your desire for Christ, no other fire will come on. But in all, most importantly, most importantly, first, free yourself from everything else. The I is ignore negativity. The R is reevaluate. And most importantly, you must expect to have an encounter with the fire. If you are not expecting to have an encounter with the fire, you wouldn't have an encounter. You wouldn't even know when you're having an encounter because you weren't expecting it. The disciples were in the upper room expecting the promise of Jesus to be fulfilled in their lives. They were expecting it. Because Jesus told them. And so they were expecting to have it every day. They are sitting there expecting, expecting, expecting. When you wake up every morning, expect it to be a blessed day. Expect a great day. Every day when I call my children or send them a chat, I always end it with this phrase. It's a great day. And they will respond, I will make it happen. All of them. If you expect it to be a great day, it will be a great day. If you wake up and think the day will be horrible, then it will be horrible. Waking up in the morning is enough for it to be a great day. You have another opportunity to encounter the fire. If you didn't encounter the fire yesterday and you wake up today, expect that it will happen today. If it doesn't happen tomorrow, if you wake up, if you wake up, because it's not guaranteed that you will wake up. If you wake up, it's a great day. It's another opportunity to encounter the fire. So be glad and rejoice in the day. I read something that someone sent to me on WhatsApp. So someone dressed up one morning, and when he got to work, 
his co-workers asked him, why are you so dressed up? What's the special occasion? Some people ask me that when I come here on Wednesday night. <laughs> and the guy said to them, the special occasion is that I am alive today and I'm able to dress myself up. That's the special occasion. When you have an attitude of gratitude, it in increases your expectation to catch the fire. David said in Psalm 5.3, In the morning, O Lord, you hear my voice. At daybreak, I lay my play before you and wait in expectation. You must expect to encounter the fire in order to encounter the fire. So tonight, free yourself of junk, please. Free yourself of debris. Free yourself of unforgiveness, guilt, past mistakes, past failures, any controlling habits. Free yourself. Ignore negativity. Ignore negative people. There are people who do nothing but tell you negative things. If you come out looking good, they will find something wrong with you. I, I mean, I'm serious. Ignore such people. Because they will dampen your day, and when your day is dampened, you cannot catch the fire. You cannot encounter the fire. Just keep going. Reevaluate yourself every day. Reevaluate. Look to see if there's any area of your, of your life that is not right. You know the ego? The ego, every 10 years, the ego secludes itself. And in that seclusion at night, the ego will begin to reevaluate re itself. It will check the beak to see if it is strong, still strong enough. It will check the feathers if they are still strong enough. If the beak is wet, uh, is weak, it will knock it off. If there are any weak feathers, it will pluck them off, and he will wait in expectation. <laughs> Until the beaks grow up again stronger, until the feathers grow back stronger, then he can fly again. I tell students when I speak to them, I say, listen, at the end of every day, you know, when they leave, when you leave, let me talk to you. When you leave your father's, your parents' home to go to university, nobody wakes you up in the morning. <laughs> Nobody asks you if you have done your homework or follows you if you've been to class or not. Some people, first, first year is the most challenging year. They see music all over campus, parties. They are free to go or come back anytime. Nobody asks. <laughs> but, I, but, I, but I tell them, listen, at the end of every day, you only have 24 hours, right? At the end of that day, when you get to your dorm, laying down, think about how you have used your day today how you have used your time, how many hours did you spend studying, how many hours did you spend playing, watching TV, going out. What did you come here for? What is your why? Why am I here? If, you have, if you're not accomplishing that why, go home. Or reevaluate yourself and make adjustment. Make adjustment. Expect to encounter the fire. Expect it. Expect it. It's important that we expect to encounter. If you don't expect it, you won't get it. Amen? Amen? Now unto him that is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all we can ever ask. Unto the king eternal, the immortal, the invisible, the only wise God, be all glory, honor, and adoration forever and ever. And everybody say, Amen. Amen. All right. Thank you so much.